Hi right, guys. It is an absolutely, and I am talking spectacularly gorgeous, over the top beautiful day here in the end times. It is just this outrageously, stupendously postcard perfect gorgeous October morning in August. It is, uh, <coughs> where are we? All right. We at Wednesday morning already. Wednesday morning, <coughs> August 2nd. Plowing into the second half of the summer of 2023. And getting ready to uh, dive back into my trailblazing. And uh, guys, I actually have to give myself a pat on the back. I have been joking about you know, my chainsaws and all of this. I want you to know that I have, let's see, this is Sunday. This will be day four of my trailblazing. I have never cranked up any fossil fuels. I'm, <coughs> I am seeing what I can do. <coughs> Damn it. What? What one almost 64 year old man with a bad back and a and I have to admit it now a hernia <clears throat> with a bad back and a hernia using no fossil fuels whatsoever how far I can make it into this job so I'm going to do what I can without fossil fuels save them to the very end of the job um, just giving it a test because <laughs> I have <coughs> I really have nothing better to do I mean it I get to spend all day every day and, and I'm butt ass naked I'm proud to say I can do this job absolutely I don't have a chainsaw and anything to you know, to cut off uh, accidentally. Uh, I'm out there butt ass naked all day long uh, in this spectacularly gorgeous weather in this beautiful forest. No fossil fuels at all. Just plunging through the wilderness in my latest little nowhere plan for nobody. Um, that song, Nowhere Man, is, you know, you get these damn songs in your head, and Nowhere Man <coughs> is the song of the day. You know, I am wondering how many people, how many people in history are ever going to set foot on these trails. Now, <clears throat> there's two trails, so I've kind of roughed in the little loop trail. So the short loop trail, which is about a, <clears throat> depending on your walking speed, I mean, you could do it in three minutes if you were, uh, but for most people, seven to ten minutes on the short loop it goes by the tr it stops by the tree house and these two beautiful springs i'll do a video of it so the short loop has the tree house and the two beautiful springs on it <clears throat> so maybe in history until the day i die 50 people uh, will, will ever set foot on that trail. Then I have the long loop, uh, which goes all around the edge of my 14 acres. And uh, you don't realize how big 14 acres is. And I'm really, the plot of land that I'm doing is probably encircling eight acres. You have no idea how big eight acres is until you try 
to ram a trail that's never been there before through eight acres of hillside without using fossil fuels. So that trail will be maybe a 20 minute walk when I am done. It could take me, if I work six hours a day, it could take me weeks, two weeks, I mean, I don't know uh, what I'm going to encounter. But I mean, I mean it's a big ass job with or without fossil fuels, even with fossil fuels, this would be a big job. I am wondering if 12 people will ever set foot on those, uh, on, on these trails I'm building. Uh, I mean, I don't even know how, you know, once they're built and I've walked them a few times, how many times I'm going to use them. I'm not even going to be here six months of the goddamn year. Uh, so I, and I don't know if this has anything to do with why I have the, the song Nowhere Man coursing through my brain, making all his nowhere plans for nobody and uh, you know this just gets back to the to the same rant that I was having a few days ago sitting here drinking my planet saving organic coffee just uh, you know talking about what do normies <clears throat> what do people do and what do they think about? That, that's two different questions. You know, what do people think about meaning plans? How many plans uh, <clears throat> do all of these nowhere people, uh, these nowhere normies, how many plans do we make that we have no intention uh, uh, of ever carrying out just uh, is it 90% of the plans we make so uh, oh I want to send out a big uh, we're, we're, we're <laughs> and then and Edward I uh, no, again, brother, don't take this personally. I, I am, I am absolutely cheering you on in this. I, I really want to be proven wrong. Uh, so there's this fellow. I've never met this man, <clears throat> named Edward, one of our tribes members, who is offered to come help me uh, build my trails. I will say, Edward, you are the only person who has shown any interest in uh, the nowhere plan for nobody, Hambone's nowhere plan for nobody of building these trails. So Edward, uh, this very nice man who I have never met, who owes me absolutely nothing, has offered to come up here and help me build these trails. The problem is, Edward, I think... Edward, where do you live? Maybe New York City or somewhere. So anyway, Edward's story is, I guess he started out, I think, from New York City or some suburb. Uh, he started out over a year ago heading here on on a cargo bike. I'm not 100% sure what a cargo bike is. So Edward is not a spring chicken. Edward, I don't know how old you are uh, looking at your, what I think is your Facebook page. I think Edward's about my age. He is not fat at least. And so, uh, so Ed, Edward is not a young man, so I guess he started out uh, over a year ago, maybe right around a year ago, was it, to come visit me 
and he made it as far as the Catskill Mountains. Amazingly enough, so in, in the middle of the Catskill Mountains, I guess his bike broke down. I can't remember what happened. Anyway, the cargo bike broke down. So this man, <clears throat> what he did, since he, he didn't have a gas sucking truck, he stashed it out in the woods. He carefully stashed the cargo bike out in the woods with a, a plan to come get it. Well, by October, he had not gotten it. So he uh, offered me the bike. He gave me very specific instructions of where to find this bicycle, this cargo bicycle uh, out in the Catskill Mountains. And it was actually Sandy and I. Uh, so Sandy and I, we were coming back from my sister's in Vermont, so we take this hundred, at least hundred mile de detour to go on this wild goose chase through the Catskill Mountains looking for Edward's abandoned cargo bike. I am 100% sure uh, I, I am where this man told me the bike was stashed. I, I mean, I was literally beating the bushes, literally beating the bushes. I know I was at the spot. No sign of the cargo bike. Uh, so as long as his directions were accurate and they were pretty, you know, pretty specific where to look for this thing, the cargo bike is not even there. I don't think the cargo bike is even there. Uh, but anyway, so it's, my guess is somebody else found it, some hunter or whatever found the thing. The, the cargo bike is gone. He thinks, Edward insists that he believes I just didn't find it. So the cargo bike has been sitting outside in the bushes, out in the woods of the Catskill Mountains of New York for a year an already broken down cargo bike has been sitting in those woods in the Catskill Mountains for a year. I put out a call for anybody out there wanting to help me uh, build these trails through Bugs in a Jar Farm. Edward is the only person on the planet who answers. <clears throat> so guess what his plan is? So I'm not sure how he's getting from his home, I think in New York City, to the Catskill Mountains. Uh, <clears throat> and if he has a way to get to the bicycle, why he doesn't just come on via that mode of transportation. But his plan now is to somehow, I don't know whether he's gonna walk or, or how the hell he's gonna get to the bicycle. <coughs> and He's going to retrieve the bicycle that has been sitting outside in the woods in the Catskill Mountains for a year and just continue his trip uh, to Bugs in a Jar Farm. Now, guys, it's, it's not an easy trip in my truck. It's a hard ride from here to that bicycle in a fucking truck is about three and a half hours over a couple of mountain ranges. I, I, I mean, I'm talking serious uh, hills and mountains and good God almighty. <clears throat> so I, I emailed Everett. I, I said, brother, I, I said, I appreciate the, you know, this offer to, Help me on these trails, but uh, <clears throat> I, I, I said your plan is patently absurd on the face of it. There is no fucking way you are getting to bugs in a jar farm on that bicycle. Ain't gonna happen, I told him. Well, Edward is, <clears throat> he is set to prove ham on little tail wrong. And, uh, <laughs> so, 
That is Edward's plan. I, I will be absolutely flabbergasted if that man rides up on that cargo bicycle. But uh, we shall see. So that is Edward's plan to help uh, Hambun make his uh, nowhere plan for nobody. Uh, I am just literally sitting, you know, getting out there and enjoying, enjoying it and appreciating nature while I still can. Uh, why anybody in the, in the state of New York would choose uh, to sit inside on a day like this. I, I, I mean, the, the, this is an absolute gift from the universe, uh, a, a day like this. I mean, I, I, I don't care if, if, if you're in a goddamn wheelchair, why, why anybody, uh, in, you know, in a wheelchair uh, would choose... <clears throat> to sit inside uh, on, on, on a day like this. I mean, I rolled out of bed at 7.30, immediately came out here, uh, and I will probably be going back inside a tiny house about 9.30 tonight. So for the next 14 hours, I'm gonna be getting out there enjoying it and appreciating nature with my making all my nowhere plans for nobody while I still can. Uh, nowhere plans for nobody. I mean, uh, you can certainly apply this to humanity talking about a fucking nowhere species, I, you know, just, just the, the absolute pointlessness of existence. Uh, I, I don't even think, I guess it was John Lennon who wrote that song. I, I, I mean, I wonder if, if, if John Lennon <clears throat> uh, ever in his own mind extrapolated that song you know, just, just to all of humanity, uh, to just take our entire fucking species, take all 8 billion of us, go back 300,000 fucking years, and what have we done with all of the plans we made? How many humans have, have been alive on this planet in the last 300,000 years. I mean, I, I have no, uh, let's call it 100 billion. No, it'd be more than that. Uh, 500, who knows? Let's call it 500 billion. 500 billion uh, nowhere men and nowhere women making all of their fucking nowhere plans for nobody. And, and this is the, the wreck we've made of the place. You know, it, it's the plans that were put into action. The, the tiny few plans that 500 billion clueless fucking morons have made uh, over the past 300,000 years uh, 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 just completely pointless. Uh, we have managed to wreck the entire joint uh, every one of those people, except the eight billion of us now, are already dead. Uh, I guess a tiny few of them, you know, and it's, it's really how many inventions, plans that were realized, uh, what percentage of humans have actually come up with the technology to wreck this place. Uh, going back, hell, we don't have to go back 300,000 years. Let's go back 300 years. Uh, how many humans can we blame for, uh, for doing this to this planet with their unfortunately not nowhere plans? 
tiny, tiny fraction uh, of, of humans have come up with the technology is what we're talking about, is uh, the technology to uh, destroy this planet. And we are going full tilt ahead. Uh, coming up with more and more of these technology traps. Oh, fuck. I mean, 99.9% .9 of us uh, have the natural tool-making skills of a fucking chimpanzee. You, you know, be honest. Uh, <laughs> you know, if you were dropped naked out there into the wilderness, 99.99% uh, .99 of us would have no fucking clue uh, how to survive. No clue. If, if we could wipe this goddamn slate clean like it's uh, getting ready to be wiped. Uh, just imagine turning back the clock 300 years and this tiny handful of people who have uh, e evolved, I would say devolved, beyond the chimpanzee level of tool making uh, to get to the levels of complexity where we are now. You know, m most of us would not be able to invent a stick you know, to stick down a termite hole to lick off the termites. 99% of us would never think of that. Uh, <laughs> unbelievable what we, uh, what we have done to this <clears throat> planet, making all our little nowhere plans for nobody. The carnage the wreckage we have left in our wake. I mean, it's truly tragic. But with that, I have come to the bottom of my cup of planet-saving organic coffee. And I need to get back to blazing trails through the wilderness. I'm using a pair of lopping shears and a rake. Lopping shears in one hand, a rake in the other, and I am back into the forest at Bugs in a Jar Farm. Anybody is very welcome to come join me in my nowhere, making my nowhere plans for nobody, but I'm quite sure, I am 100% sure, you are too busy making your own nowhere plans for nobody in your own puny little pointless life to come out here and join me uh, on my nowhere plan for nobody in my own puny little worthless pointless existence. Oh boy, where's that dog? Bye guys.